that music. Party's not a party's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minute! Hello everyone and welcome once again to Bat Minute of the Phantasm This is the podcast that would warn you You can never be too careful with all those weirdos around But we are the weirdos, mister. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. Uh, And once again, John Parker, my stalwart co-host, can't be here today. But, you know, filling in uh, in guest duty is the resplendent people's joker herself. It is uh, Vera Drew. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, more more than welcome. Yeah, we're here today to talk specifically about minute 39 of Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, minute 39 begins with a rackety racketeer on a ride, a rickety racketeer on a ride, uh, and it ends a minute later with getting down to business. Um, and yeah, just another terrific minute with with uh, the Joker and Sal Valestra here. Um, my first note of this was that um, I always misquote this line in my head because he shoves him into the roller coaster. And he's like, oh, we must repair to more comfortable environments. Now hold on to your hat and watch the valuables. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, and for some reason in my head, I always thought he says hats. Like, hold on to your hats. Like, because that's a really old-fashioned term. Yeah. For, like, I never, I was trying to find out, like. But what does he actually say? He just says, hold on to your hat. And I don't oh. know, I always had it mixed up because... I just around the time I was really watching like the old VHS I had of this, I was also watching uh, Duck Soup a lot. You know, Mark, the old Marx Brothers movie, <laughs> and uh-huh. there's a bit where like Groucho offends a guy and he tries to kick him out of his house, and Groucho's like, "Then go and never dock in my towels again." And the guy who's like, really, you know, fancy rich guy goes, "My hats!" The kind of the man that his coats brought over, and then Groucho's like, "My towels!" and runs away. Um, and so I thought they were going for like all oh, the old fashioned things, like I guess an old fashioned term for like your coat was your hats, which is bizarre no. to me. <laughs> but have you ever come across this? Or no, I I I, I never have. I'll t- I'll take your word for it, but I don't, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen duck soup. Oh, it's great! It's really really again. Let's see, it's nineteen thirty three, so it's you know there's some things in there that are quite dated, but uh, beyond that, it's very very good. Um, and though I say that, I could entirely be misremembering duck soup, and the, the guy might just go my hat, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that must be a term for your coat or something. So um, it would be so if they did if it did used to be like that. I would understand why it wouldn't be anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> what if you brought a coat and and multiple hat it's just not a good you know it leads to more questions potentially yeah yeah it's like yeah it's just 60 years of people going bring me my hats and someone bring them coming over with like a, a variety of hats and like no i'm at my coat man what are you doing <laughs> um that's the other thing too because apparently the, the term for like a butler used to be a batman as well so that's that's long time. No, too. really? Yeah, yeah. And so Alfred is Batman's Batman. Like, like it's a, it's a joke we've had to make a couple of times because we're like, that's what they used to call them back in the day. <laughs> had uh, they ever made that joke in a Batman movie? Not in any of the move, not in like any of the big movies. I'm sure somewhere in some iteration. Yeah, like, like you know, deep. Yeah, yeah, deep probably in like, like on the Harley Quinn show or something. Yeah, or even like the Beware the Batman or something. We're like, well. <laughs> No, nobody watched those. <laughs> so the other thing that of note in that, uh, just to kind of segue, the there's not really any live action portrayals of like Joker hanging around like an old theme park. No, that's true enough. Yeah, he's only he had I guess in '89 he was in the Axis Chemical Plant. Like right, that, that right. was his base, which we thought was weird because like oh it's. I guess it's like, but it's just such a deep, it's such a deep, like, I don't know, like, like just even with like the killing joke and stuff, like, I feel like in the comics a lot, like a lot of times Joker is like building some sort of up ride that 
like is gonna like psychologically humiliate somebody or mm, yeah like is hanging out in like an abandoned like yeah like carnival or something yeah I'm surprised yeah. they probably did it on gotham i'm vaguely remembering something like that on gotham i but... oh, see i never i only lasted a few episodes with gotham i was just aware that like in season by like season seven or whatever they had like multiple people who might have been the joker one of them yeah. was a set of twins and stuff. And I was like, oh, it seems like you're making this really complicated, it's, guys. <laughs> you know, like, I... So, Gotham, for me, maybe it was just the right place at the right time. <laughs> like, that show, I love that show so much. Oh, oh, <laughs> it, is wow. so, it is so bonkers. And, like, I do think, like, the first couple episodes are really hard to get through because, like, there's just not even Batman villains in them. It's mm. just, like... The, there's like a weird balloon like a guy who just like straps people to weather I think that, that was the one i was out i was just like a guy strapped you to the balloon and then but there were it's like it's a it's an adam west concept but treated yeah. with the, the with the gravity of a nolan thing and i was like that's why i love that show it's so <laughs> it's like it's tonally it's tonally all over the place and it but it, and it also takes some like pretty crazy swings like like barbara gordon goes crazy and kind of you kind of think at one point she's gonna be like either joker's harley quinn or like a girl joker but she kind of just becomes this like other cool weird like f***ed up villain mm. um the finale sucks but the rest of it <laughs> i love gotham yeah highly recommend I, was, I saw the still of the guy in the batman outfit and was like oh okay <laughs> that, yeah that. they just it's yeah i mean it's just cw or whatever yeah yeah um <laughs> but then yeah we got the the roller coaster kicks into life and again you're talking about like joker having to make little things i guess he's having to like hang out in this place maintaining the park <laughs> yeah like he's like piecing together he's like playing with like old robots and stuff yeah <laughs> like yeah. from rides like i love that so much it's just a whole scenario reminded me of um that south park where cartman buys the theme park so he can just ride all the rides himself, and then he realizes like the rides are going to break down, so you're going to have to pay a guy to come in and fix them sometimes. And then, like, oh, well, people are sneaking in over the fence. He's like, well, you have to hire a security guard. And eventually it just turns into, like, a normal theme park because he has to keep the costs of running the theme park. Finally he catches up with them and stuff. So I imagine now this is the beginning of Joker's plot line where he's like, oh, I finally got my own theme park. It's everything. That's why he's not out committing crimes. It's like, this, it was all leading to this. Finally, I've got my own place. But... um. Eventually, then he's like, "Oh, if Sal Valestra can get in, then anyway, I'll have to hire a security guy." And uh, eventually, then we'll just get like, yeah, Joker's Funland, where it's just like, "Oh, he, he turned, he turned <laughs> legit." <laughs> I guess. God, I would love that. I would. Somebody should make that Joker movie. Just uh, <laughs> Joker having to go legit after building his like narcissistic like murder theme park. <laughs> well, okay, it's 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 a. One of the things to point out, though, is it's such a beautiful representation of um, not so much the Joker's life, but like Bruce's life. Because the last time we saw, uh, you know, the house of the future and whatnot yeah. was you know his bright, shining future that he could have had this domestic, classic future domestic lifestyle with Andrea Beaumont. And instead, all that's rotted away. And the thing that's actually front and center in Bruce's life is... Like the 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 warped weird character of the Joker and like all the criminality that he represents in Gotham It's like that's that was Batman's future that was Bruce Wayne's future all the time is leading to this guy, um which is yeah great uh, I love it as a as a theme it's just one of those ones where you're like oh so he's hanging out in the same place that Bruce took Andrea for a date that's a bit of that's a bit of a plot contrivance but like come on man just sometimes you just have to be poetic it makes sense though it also makes sense like I mean like the Joker would be there like as, as part of that like it's his he's so just like wrapped he's like function is just to wrap himself up in every aspect of bruce's psyche that like it totally tracks for me and like it's also like going back to that thing we were talking about in the last episode like him almost being aware that he's in in like a movie like or something like the fact that you know, like he's living in this sort of like temple that embodies like the passage and decay of like time and Batman and, and Gotham and stuff like 
I think it just it so works. It's yeah, so, it's so it's so delicious. And all the and like, I don't know. This scene too is just effective because like, um, I love the just the angle of like Joker being the evolution of the criminal. Like things getting just so bad that even like gangsters are afraid of this guy <laughs> and like he's just not playing by the old rules he's not playing by new he's not playing by any rules really he's yeah, just yeah it's so yeah, strange it's... That the, the, again though talking about it, like in the last minute we we're doing the whole oh, why so formal became why so serious i, yeah. I kind of wonder if this is where i think chris nolan would say that the idea of like the escalation in gotham uh that's a big thing in the long Halloween. Like that's yeah. kind of like it turns from like, oh, the the Falcons run this town to by the end of it, it's like the DA's half a face crazy guy. You know, he's like he's, you know, he's turned into a carnival freak himself and stuff. <laughs> right. Um whereas uh there's, there's such an element though of the idea of a gangster coming for the Joker for help and then this sprawling out into like a kind of you know a series of crazy events. And that is like, well that's what happens in the Dark Knight too. Like the the, the you know the Joker offers his services, they turn him down and then like you got that guy with called like the Chechen doing like the clown. He was right. We should go hire him and stuff. Um, I, I love that as a, a thing that seems to keep popping up now. Of like, oh yeah, pe- gangsters going to the Joker for help, uh, and it being yeah. like the last ditch thing. It's like this is the worst concept, but things are that desperate. We have to go to this guy, and they always underestimate him. It's always that thing of like. Well, how bad could it be? <laughs> and I was like, no, he's yeah. gonna turn on you, and it's gonna blow up in your face. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's like an acknowledgement that okay, this will probably backfire. In all of those dynamics, there's always like an acknowledgement. Okay, this will probably backfire because this guy is crazy mm. and like not really motivated by money or even like power. Like his vague sense of like power and like what he wants is like it's not. Yeah, it's it's unclear. Yeah, yeah. Some men uh, just want to watch the world burn. As a, yeah, as, as they say. Uh, and so yeah, it's so uh, that's all stuff for next week. With the jo- the Joker doesn't seem to even he's offered a lot of money and he's just like Ugh, you know just so throws it off. But in other episodes, he's out like actively robbing jewelry stores and stuff. And it's like again, it's just his motivations yeah. are just fluctuating all over the place because it's just like he's he's he doesn't have a a, a distinct motivation. He's just he just is. He's uh, just playing Grand Theft Auto Five with reality twenty four seven three sixty five. Yeah, that's a fantastic way to put that. Actually, yeah, that's about as succinct a way of of, of summing up the Joker as uh, as you're ever going to hear, really. Um, and yeah, so uh, before as he's going in, zipping in through the roller coaster, uh, we do get. Um, I thought if it plays, I don't. I don't think it does play anywhere else in the movie. We get Shirley Walker's Joker theme. Um, which was oh, you know, yeah, you know, the uh, and I love that like because every time you hear that, you know, throughout the animated series, they always give it different little cadences. They'll you know sometimes they'll you know make, they'll make it a little creepier. Sometimes they'll make it a little jollier. Sometimes it's just very campy. Sometimes it's very serious. That kind of thing. And I love the spin here. It has to me uh, like because when they when they land in the house. It has this, you know, it ends on that kind of, bwah, 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 mm-hmm. uh, which is very 1950s sitcom kind of thing. And because he erupts out with like, honey, I'm home. And I think it's a deliberate thing to kind of invoke like, I love Lucy or, you know, the the Mary Tyler Moore show, like that, that kind of thing. Um, I thought maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but like I thought that was what they're, it felt, it felt to me that's what they were going for. No, that's what it feels like. I, I think I, I, talked a lot about this in the last minute but like it's just him yeah he like he seems to be like kind of almost like the like just like walking manifestation of like 1950s culture turned inside out or something like he's (laughs) like just yeah like completely like he thinks he's dick van dyke yeah yeah i just love the um that's the thing they actually changed from the script um because uh he has the you know the, the the great little moment where the robot dog comes up to him, and he's like, "Oh, don't mind my home security system down, Rusty," and then just boots it, drop kicks him, <laughs> yeah, just, just <laughs> drop kicks that robot dog. He, he turns this, he has his hands, his hips turns to Sal with a real like a real look of pride about what he's done as well. Yeah. Uh, but it's just like, does he do that every time? 
somebody comes over or like does he rebuild that dog if it breaks like i don't <laughs> so it's like that dog's great. gonna turn on him someday damn it <laughs> um but it's a thing that, that that's added in the um the the screenplay doesn't have that in there that was must have been a last minute edition because uh initially Do you know oh go ahead sorry no i was just gonna say that the the whole um which like one of my favorite lines of the whole movie is of course the you know can't be too careful with all those weirdos around um that's actually as soon as Valester shows up like a bunch of those little drones come out and the joke is like oh don't mind my home security system and you know I can't be too careful with all those weirdos around uh but this works so much better though because again it is like he's bringing them into like this rotting warped version of like 1950s domesticity he's just loving it. he's just relishing freaking this guy out as well like there's no way that this is all this is just the way the Joker is, but he's also just loving freaking out Sal Valestra as well. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 really great. Like I, they really I don't know. It's it's it is there is an unsettlingness to the to like these Joker scenes that I don't know. Like I I maybe need to do, do like another uh, rewatch of uh, Batman TAS just because like. I don't remember like feeling like unnerved as much by like Mark Hamill's performance uh, oh, as I did watching this. Oh, he has a couple of cre- like that, that's the, the big thing, and this is one of the, the, the major developments that only seems to have happened really erupting forth in like the last since the Dark Knight came out. Basically, is that um, the major characteristic I take away from Mark Hamill's version of the Joker, and it's in full flight here, is that he's a bully. Like he yeah. really loves picking on people. Like his whole like the whole relationship with Harley Quinn. One of his big episodes uh, from uh, from BTAS, uh, Batman the Animated Series, is that uh, that uh, the Joker's favor, where this some slub go, going home gets involved with the Joker, and he just he just picks on him, and he's just like you you know, you're gonna do me a favor someday. I'm gonna come for you, and you better do what I tell you to do. And his whole motivation behind that is just like I just love messing with this guy, and he's such yeah. a he's such a guy constant everything throughout like episodes where even to his own goons he'll just pick on them and then you know someone will say something and he'll just turn around you know slap them or something and then later on be like any questions like constantly intimidating people because you know he's obviously he's got a sort of narcissistic personality but it's very fragile as you see like the men is coming up next week when Valestra asserts himself the the fury that releases in the Joker that someone stood up to him for a second um but to go from that, where like this is the characterization, is like, oh, this guy's he's a he's a big bully, to now you get like Arthur Fleck version of the Joker, where he's yeah. like he's the guy who's entirely put upon, and like the one person he doesn't kill is the guy who was always nice to him. There's this kind of thing where like, well, he's he's you know he's Arthur Fleck's not the people's Joker because that's obviously you, Vera, but um, he does have this vibe of like, well, it's it's socialist Joker, and it's even in the Harley yeah. Quinn TV show where he is flat out a socialist. He runs for mayor under like a socialist platform, and it's just so weird to me that like, yeah, it's uh, they've turned this character from being like, you know, it was always always a source of like, you know, initially was sort of a Dick Tracy esque malignant force then turned into more of a goofy thing and then goes on and on he just gets really evil in the 80s uh, but always always a bad guy and now since I'm thinking of Heath Ledger where everyone would like listen to what Heath Ledger was saying and go like oh he's got some points that guy um, and then the I guess meme culture and the whole we live in a society thing has now brought about like uh, this new era of, of the Joker which is um, I also I just think it's also like depends on where we're just at like as a as a society in general <laughs> well like, we do live because, in one. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm informed we but. definitely do <laughs> um but yeah like i mean like i think like i mean the 80s joker being exceptionally f-ed up is is an obvious example of just like the bright but the byproduct of a very like cynical time, dark time where fans felt empowered to like write in and vote on whether or not robin should be killed or not (laughs) um (laughs) like i mean that's a perfect example of like he just it's kind of like a mirror to like whatever wherever the world's at and like i mean when i saw todd phillips joker i was really i think what i liked about it the most was just how it was just crazy seeing 
like class consciousness and like conversations around mental health and like toxic family structures and stuff like in the context of like a superhero movie and the, then the fact that it also like made a billion dollars like and like i don't know like i think um well, people are people are broke and hungry and pissed mm. off at the government <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and each other so like i think we're going to just only see jokers get more and more radicalized as as the portrayals yeah. go on i know that was a i really of... don't want to see matt reeves i shouldn't say this publicly but i just will whatever i really don't want to see matt reeves as portrayal of the joker <laughs> i'm really i i was not like that that deleted scene from that movie like really bugged me i thought it was so lame oh the the, the, the big thing about that deleted scene is that it's directly from red dragon like that's yeah. just that's just the scene of Will Graham going to visit Hannibal Lecter in Red Dragon. It's like this it's virtually the same dialogue. And it's like that's real lazy, Matt. Like I actually I really yeah. love the Batman, but like I I watched that and I was like I don't it's so weird talking like with such enthusiasm about the Joker cuz I'm very much like put that character away for a while. Please for the love of yeah. God. Just you know, go and do something else in the Batman universe in the main Batman movies and then bring him back down the line cuz that's my big thing. Like, that's why The Dark Knight was so big. It's because, like, it had been nearly 20 years before someone went, like, Batman and the Joker together at last kind of thing. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, so now I'm, you – we've got a bunch of, like, modern stuff. Like, I mean, because because of the Harley Quinn show, because, like, yeah, like, it's – it's and, like, I would much rather see Todd Phillips' Joker, like, his Joker sequel yeah, anyway. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm more lining up for that mm. just because, like – I think there's just more like I think I think at this point like if 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 we're going to be like tackling that character like there's just got to be more to it than just like he's a f***ed up clown. <laughs> like it just is like who cares man. Yeah. Like, I'm not afraid of clowns like mm. give me something real yeah. or like fantastical or interesting do something new i think it's it's, it's the thing too because i love barry Keoghan as a as an actor there's obviously a, a bit of irish pride as well it's like oh yes i have to get this guy's back um uh but his betrayal too is just like it's so ledgery like it's really just like you're just yeah. doing and then that's still recent memory for me like i i know it's been like 15 years or whatever but it's like that's still really recent, though. Like that's it had but such. It's a... also and it's also like Ledger did and did something completely different than yeah yeah Jack Nicholson. Like the fact that these things had such an impact is that and I know Mark Hamill said that when um when he came in for his audition uh, for the Joker um so so his, his, like, that's one of the, the great stories of like oh my god it was so clo- we we're so close to not getting this guy as the Joker was and it's unthinkable now but like. Obviously, he came in to. Um, they'd already cast Tim Curry. They right. they brought him in. Uh, he actually didn't have to audition for Ferris Boyle. Like they, he just because he's a big comic book guy. He's just a big nerd. Mark Hamill. That's kind of one of the most endearing things about him is he's so nerdy. Uh, but he put out like those people like I just want to be on this Batman show, and they just gave him a script and went, like you can play this guy. Ferris Boyle being the you know one off industrialist villain in the Heart of Ice episode, uh, drawn to look like Mark Hamill. And he's great. And then they're like, well, see ya. And kind of walked away really wanting to be more involved. And then they're like, Tim Curry didn't work out. Uh, and then they, they have the, the moment of saying to him, like, we want you to audition for the Joker. Uh, and him coming, they said he came in and they had like the picture of him up, the picture of the Joker, the concept out of the Joker, like the one you always see where he's got like the index finger held up that they always use in publicity stills and stuff. And they just had written under it and underlined was like, do not think Nicholson. Like, they, we do not want a Jack Nicholson impression. Yeah. Uh, and then to go for, like, such a defining, like, I have so much love for Jack Nicholson's Joker. Like, he's phenomenal in that film. But then only a mere, what, three years later to have, like, another def- definitive version of the character pop up so soon after Jack Nicholson. And they're so completely different um, in terms of their presentation. And then, yeah, you have to wait until 2008. Before you got Heath Ledger coming in and going like, here's something again, completely different that you've never seen before. Um, and then, yeah, when Jared Letter pops up, it's like, well, there's things here I've never seen before. But, like, quite frankly, I wish I hadn't seen them in the uh, in the first place. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is why the world is ready for the people's Joker, Vera. Like, I think that's, like, that. that's something 
I've not seen I think before. So I realized as I was saying that last thing, I'm like, um, I I could end all this by saying like, and that's why the people's joker is the definitive. <laughs> but I I don't I wasn't, but yeah, I mean, like that's really what the mission statement of the movie was was to really like do something completely different with the characters and like come up with like all the character designs are uh, like every single DC character pretty much is parodied in this movie. Mm. And it's all original. Like, you know, we got original concept art for each character and like, they're all new interpretations, queered overtly queered interpretations of, of these characters and stuff. Um, and like, while also really, cause I think you can, I think you can like you do something new with him like joker but like you can harken back to the old stuff like there is some like like you pointed out with like the lines like there's some continuity even between hamill's joker and like heath ledger's joker Mm. and like the fact that like you know you yeah sure throw 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 your joker in a in an abandoned theme park or or make your joker whatever like yeah yeah like just it's like there's just, you know, like there's things you could still call back to while still doing a new portrayal. I think yeah, that's like what yeah. you're. So that, that really... was the big thing when um, you know, people on the internet, shockingly, I don't want to blow your mind, Vera, but they complained uh, about something on the internet way back when. Yeah, yeah, that's where uh, they do that. <laughs> and um, I remember like when, you know, everything was complained about, uh, about Heath Ledger Joker before the movie was released. Uh, people were just, the knives were out for, for that betrayal. Uh, from the moment he was cast up until like, hey, turned out it was really good. Uh, but I remember one of the things being like, why has he got black rings around his eyes? The Joker doesn't have black rings around his eyes. And at, at the time, I was sitting going like pointing at the animated series like, he does right there. There's the black the right. black, black rings are around his eyes. Um, it's, it's kind of an odd touch, though, because you, you do see it particularly in uh, the, um, you know, can't be too careful with all those weirdos around. It's that the blackness isn't on his eyelid. It's like it's around his eyes, but then his, his lids are white. So it's kind of one of those things like, is he, whether he's applying makeup or whether it's a result of the chemical scarring. Or... Yeah, I've, I've always thought this Joker was really just like horribly disfigured and not, it's never felt like makeup to me. No. Which is no. interesting that there would be that much. It's almost like his eyes are sunken in or something or like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really um, dilate or I don't know because they do that. They obviously they have the 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 revamped animation uh, when they moved to WB and they had that uh, the, the Joker design I did not care for. Uh, and I don't think many people care for when they have it with no. like the, the straight up black eyes with the white pupil. Uh, and apparently that's that is that entirely was inspired by um, the cover for the comic of Mad Love. Where they just had one shot a Joker holding a Tommy gun and shooting, but he's all in shadow, and you're seeing these little like white pupils popping out of the shadowy face, and they love that so much that they're like, yeah, uh, and I think they said like he looks like a grinning skull. It's fantastic. Get rid of the lips, just have the eyes be like that, and then for like a, a bunch of episodes, you have this terrible looking Joker. It was like, oh no 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 no, um, and then they had to like they obviously revamped it again for Justice League. And I've seen people do fan edits where they actually put like. You know, you complain about like what what the 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 all black eyes with the dot. If you put that on this Joker, it actually looks really good. It's just that everything else about him's the the redesign was sort of a bit weak sauce in, in comparison. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's just weird too that it's like, and it almost kind of bumps me in this movie too. Like just the fact that like Hamill's doing it's the same Joker, but like he looks so. Yeah, I got a picture pulled up of this the redesign now. I like could kind of picture it in my head as you were talking about it and then seeing it just made my stomach turn. Yeah. <laughs> he's too he's too basic. There's no red lips. His hair is pretty much just black. And he's got yeah. he's not he's not freakish enough. Like you got you want this guy to be really crazy looking. You want him to be very carnival esque and it's like, yeah, he just kinda looks like I guess you could be like, Well, I guess his eyes are missing? Like does he just not have eyes? Like are they just like his eyes have sunk so far back into his head that the chemicals turn them black? Like, what's the eyes is the, the big thing you're focusing on? But um, they never explain. Apparently, I, I've since looked into this uh, because there are people on YouTube, um, the Watchtower database, who they are 
devastatingly thorough in their their research about the the Batman animated series. And they've explained nearly every other redesign. Uh, apparently, they're, they're continuity reasons because you know you'd have things like uh, Catwoman in the original, you know, the original BTAS episodes was blonde mm. hair, big bushy blonde hair, gray cat suit. Yes, uh, yeah. And then they changed her into the kind of Darwin Cook looking uh, Catwoman, you know, pixie, black pixie cut, all black outfit, and then she has a weird thing where she. Her face turns like completely like Joker white when she's got the mask on, and you're like, oh, I guess that's her skin tone. And like, no, when she has the mask off, she just has like, like you know, p- like a pink. She has a pinkish hue to the skin. Then and it's like, was she putting makeup on every time she dresses up as Catwoman? What's, what's happening here? Uh, but apparently, in the comics, they do um, they've actually explained that uh, she found out that her she wasn't a natural blonde, and she found out that her hair dye company was testing on animals. And so she let the hair go black and then cut it. And that's why. And then she just changed into Ooh. more of a, there's a whole thing about the fact that like the old, um, the, the old BTAS penguin was very heavily designed to look like Diane DeVito's penguin. Cause they were made to do that. Uh, right. Right. Uh, and then later on, he just looks like kind of like a normal guy for the most part. Uh, and yeah, in the most recent con uh, that uh, the Batman, the adventures continue, they have a whole scene where they introduce Jason Todd into the BTS universe, and they have him kicking Oswald, the old Oswald, out of a helicopter. And then he just later says, like, yes, all the, the it took you know a lot of work from the plastic surgeons and all the doctors to keep me alive, but like I finally bounced Amazing. back. Amazing. And so they actually say, like, yeah, he got his fingers separated, I guess, and they cut down, they lost a lot of weight, and they kind of got the hunchback repaired, and that's why he looks so different. It's like, oh, they actually made the effort to do it. They never explain why the Joker looks so different. <laughs> it's just supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there is a way. It's like Batman poked out his eyes and ripped off his lips, I guess. <laughs> it's the only thing we can, uh, you know, the only sort of attempt to be like, well, maybe something. But um, I don't know. I mean, or like, I do like canonically that like the Joker can just somehow like tra- like transform. Like Joker's like just like blinking through alternate dimensions and like, that's why there's different character designs yeah, throughout yeah. or something. Yeah. There's also like the, do that head cannon. Um, cause even in the, uh, the, orig- the original versions they had of them, I'll put in the, uh, the link in the chat. They, they really changed the smile too, to be, um, like initially like now I see him, it's like, Oh, big old yellow teeth and stuff. But they, they really yeah, were this, trying to go for like yeah. a kind of weird, like a donkey teeth kind of thing. Like it's a really crooked, hideous smile. I guess they were like, it's maybe uh, it's too complicated to keep animating that. <laughs> so they dialed I think the that's way back. Probably it. Yeah. Like all of the, all the like original Bruce Tim designs are so gorgeous, but I can't imagine a world where they, they would have just never been able to do that many episodes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's like the thing about, I mean, like I love Bat, I love BTS so much. And, um, you know, I love both Bruce, uh, and, and Paul Dini as well. But like, it's like you can just tell they were like rushed and like kind of didn't like there's some like it's I wish like I wish like they gave them more time to make those episodes or that there were less episodes just because of because of how like beautiful the character design and yeah animation yeah. could be if like they weren't I think yeah. it's also spread over different uh, you know outsourced to different animation studios in Korea and they have ones like in individual episodes on the commentary. You'll know Bruce Tim going like, "Well, I know what studio made that yeah. one because it looks like crap." <laughs> and then, like no one's more critical of how like the the shows turned out than Bruce Tim. Uh, and sometimes yeah, you're like, yeah. "Oh, this is fantastic," and he's like, "Going, nope, 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 not happy with it. It's not supposed to look like that." Um, and yeah, so it's it's all. It's all... But it's crazy because it still did push the medium forward because it still was better than oh like yeah every other animated show. It's like that plus like the like storyboard driven stuff that was happening at Nickelodeon at the time really changed animation mm. for good. But yeah, it, it makes total sense why he would be like, it's, it's, I'm uh, making my way through uh, justice league, you know, justice league unlimited and whatnot uh, again. Uh, and it's so weird, like hopping back and forth between like watching mask of the phantasm and then those, cause like they've dialed down the animation that is still technically great. But it's just so yeah. much simpler, and you're kind of like from going to such a sumptuous banquet of like colors and detail that is in Mask of the Phantasm, 
to then been like, oh yeah, the 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 the, the, the most basic rudimentary version of that in Justice League. It's just really like, oh yeah, 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 they really, they really dialed it back. Like, you just wonder if Batman himself, as soon as he leaves Gotham, is like, man, the world looks a, li- a, li- a lot blander, like out here <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, there's less textures on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what the Joker's up to now. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. not getting, uh, not getting, having, you know, meatloaf for uh, for dinner. Uh, <laughs> it says like the, I had in my head as soon as he said the, um, that's a meme I'm going to have to make when the episode comes out. Uh, him going like, oh, meatloaf again, uh, I had it for lunch. And just imagining uh, Kirk Van Houten going like, uh, I don't like the idea of Joker having two meatloaf meals in one day. Um, harkening back to the, I don't know if <laughs> that might be too deep because of a Simpsons joke. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even know it was a Simpsons. People always make Simpsons references to me, but like I, it's such, it's, it's, it's such a big pop cultural blind spot for me i've I've seen literally like five episodes oh, just because wow. i wasn't allowed to watch it as a kid um but i was allowed to watch seinfeld <laughs> fucking like way worse and probably like is created a lot of like relationship dysfunction for myself in my 20s just oh yeah being allowed to watch that it's as a only, child but yeah only stuff only time now because i kind of grew up in seinfeld too and it's only in my 30s because I used to think that my perception of the characters when I was a teenager was like, well, that's kind of what being adults like. Right. And then yeah. only now in my 30s, like, oh, wow, these these are all, these people are terrible. <laughs> like they're so judgmental. Yeah. So it's like, oh, this, is, this, 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 this was the wrong the wrong lessons to take away. from. like, oh, man, I've wasted so many relationships because I had that kind of Seinfeld mentality, I think. so. No, completely, completely. It definitely it definitely like affected that. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Like I, I, I also it's weird, too, because like I feel like I hear people like always say like it's always sunny. They like make the comparison. It's like Seinfeld on crack or whatever. Mm. But it's like those characters to me are so much more endearing because of how like stupid they are. And they're like addicted to drugs and stuff. <laughs> Whereas like in Seinfeld, it's like they are they're like intelligent upper middle class people yeah. holding down jobs, getting having lots of sex and also just being like emotional terrorists to every single person they come into contact with. Like it is like I tried like I while I was like finishing the people's Joker, I I love like watching stuff while I'm doing like doing VFX and stuff. So like I was trying to work my way through Seinfeld, but I could not binge it. It was just and like I know like people somebody got shamed for this on Twitter recent or like in, within the last year for <laughs> saying something to this effect of this conversation we're having but I do think there is invalidity in it like those characters are just so unethical and scary <laughs> it's like a horror show it's it's crazy that that's oh, a totally. comedy 100% but I think I, I appreciate the edge of Seinfeld where like they when they were making it they kind of knew like well these people are terrible like they literally go to prison yeah. at the end of the show but I remember like in the later <laughs> seasons of Friends there had been an episode where Ross is like something happens to him he's like why do why do bad things happen to good people like talking about himself I was like Dude, you are such an asshole. Like, yeah, and, he's the worst. Yeah, him, he and then all the rest of them. Like, all the end, the last few seasons of Friends are just them snipping at each other all the time. They don't even seem like well, they're friends like, anymore. They just seem like they're just people who were barely putting up with each other. That's what's weird about like why people were. I mean, I don't under. I understand, I guess, why people didn't like the Seinfeld finale, but like. To me, it's like it's the only logical conclusion. <laughs> the show needed to do that <laughs> to like really solidify. Just it's the only conclusion you can reach, yeah. and like is is either putting them in jail or or like killing them all. Mm. I guess I kind of do wish it would have been a better. It would have been a way better finale if they died in that plane crash, and then like ha- the rest of the episode. It was still like an hour long episode, but the rest of it was just them like working their way through like hell bureaucracy and, and stuff <laughs> like that would have been a way better ending yeah th- i would i would have like, happily taken that yeah for sure go so we went so far no no i think it's my fault for interesting the the um yeah there's there's, a, there's a one scene in the simpsons where there's a pta meeting and mill has his dad stands up and goes like uh, i'd like to see uh the lunchtime menus so parents can plan their dinner menus accordingly. Uh, I don't like the idea of Millhouse having two spaghetti meals in one day. <laughs> and it's just the <laughs> stupidest, pettiest complaints. I love it so much. Uh and that's what the uh, the Joker having two meatloaf meals in one day and uh, came from. It is weird that he had meatloaf for lunch though. Like that is a weird <laughs> choice to make. I mean that is a Joker 
certified choice. Mm. To be fair, to, though, to like, there's no actual meatloaf on display, so we don't even know if he actually had a lunch. Like, Yeah, it's also an inanimate object that he's talking to, so like... Is he if if there is going to actually be meatloaf served tonight, he's the one that's probably actually making it, <laughs> not, true, not yeah, his like yeah. broken down sex robot. Yeah. That he has. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah. The uh, the illusion then is very heavily like, you know, they go, hey, 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 Hazel here, cutie. You know, choose. Yeah, real. he's humping that robot yeah. for sure. It's just the way like he, he, he pinches the cheek and then the skin comes off. And instead of like cleaning it away, he kind of like he's like he kind of gives it a little smirk and then puts it in his in his breast pocket as if like I'm saving that for later. Like, what are you doing with the robot? <laughs> yeah, I could have watched five seasons of of these interactions with, <laughs> with him and that, and like the the robot could have become sentient at one point. And mm. Tara and you know, There's a, the thing is, cause it. it's not it's not just a it's not a show for Velestra. Like later on in the movie. When he thinks he's alone, he's talking to the robot. So it's like, no, he's clearly, <laughs> yeah, no. you know, it's, it's, it is a kind of like, are you a pleasure model, Hazel? <laughs> like, it's, it's, he's got these moments of like, people gave out when um, it uh, it appeared that uh, Lando Calrissian in Solo was, uh, you know, shacking up with the, the Phoebe Waller-Bridge robot. And it's like, well, you know, Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker beat him to it because <laughs> yeah. he, he, was, he, he was, him and Hazel were definitely having uh, having some moments there. Um, and anime was doing that 20 years before so. yeah yeah um I, I love i love the concept of hazel though in that it, it's kind of showing we, we had a little bit of trouble when it showed bruce's potential future in the house of the future where like he was going through and they're like this is the life you could have but people the man sits and, sits and watches the tv and the woman makes dinner and that's the way the world goes um, and we're like, ah, that's a bit dated, you know. I don't know if Bruce wanted to be into that. And even in like the script and the novelization, they emphasize that him and Andre are kind of like mocking it and stuff. So we're like, oh, thank God. Um, but uh, but now it almost feels like, the fact that Hazel's life it seems more horrible now that she's just like stuck doing the same motion over and over and just rusting and rotting to death. It's kind of like I wonder if that's more of a commentary there. Like, well, you know, this thing seemed great when you were going into it. Maybe people then entering into married life thinking like, oh yeah, it'll be great. The traditional, you know, gender roles and things like that, and then discovering like, this is it. This is all I'm supposed to do is just make the dinner and da 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 and da 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 da, and it actually being like really terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. No, it 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 all it all it all feels like it kind of mirrors the like bruce you know struggling with basically i guess just like wanting a wife mm. or like he's just always having to choose between having a wife or being batman and uh <laughs> it's so interesting <laughs> it's just such an interesting like either or for a person to constantly be in <laughs> mm. throughout multiple texts <laughs> um one thing though talking about the, the creative side of it though is that um, it was not brought up in the show yet, but uh, it's a thing that, you know, the context of how these scenes in particular were written. Um, have you ever come across, Vera, um, Dark Knight, uh, a true Batman story? I don't think so. It's a, it's a novel by, a graphic novel by Paul Dini. Uh, and it's basically telling what happened to him during the production of Mask of the Phantasm. And it's not a pleasant story. Um, he was basically going out on a date one night where he was um, like a lot. There's a lot of stuff in here where um, in Mask of the Phantasm, this like, uh, you know, this is a direct appears to be pulled from his life directly. Like obviously at the beginning, there's uh, the moment where Arthur Reeve says to Bruce, like, oh, honestly, Bruce, this is as if you're you date these women knowing there's no future with them. Uh, and apparently, but Paul Dini seen that in the script was like, is this a knock at me because of my dating life? Because of the, I've, I've said these, the people have said these things to me and I've, you know, kind of bemoaned how, how terrible my love life is. Um, he has a whole big thing about like, you know, his, his go through his childhood and stuff like that. And he has literally everything going for him, but he's still miserable because he just can't, he doesn't know how to deal with people and he can't find like a date and stuff like that. He has a friend who he thinks is, you know, he thinks things are going great with. They're out and dates and stuff. And then she mentions, oh, my boyfriend would really love this. And he's like, oh, God damn it. Uh, and then that night, as he, he she's like, oh, I'll give you a lift home. He's like, no, no, I'm going to walk it. Um, despondently walks away. And as he's going home, gets mugged. 
and gets like violently, violently beaten. Uh, they completely like they. I think they turned like his sections of his skull were pulverized into dust. Apparently, it was so, such a severe beating. Uh, like his whole cheekbone was shattered. Uh, he had to have surgery and stuff like that. Uh, and then, uh, weirdly, like again, because this is unconscionable to me, because you know I'm obviously recording from Liverpool in the in the UK here. Um, he just doesn't go to the hospital because he's just like, I'm not paying for that. <laughs> like, like, I'm like, it'll be fine. I'll, I'll walk it off or whatever. And it was actually uh, Arlene Sorkin because uh, they're, they're dear, dear oh, friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he phoned her and she's like, Paul, what the hell's the matter with you? He's like, oh, this happened. She comes over the house. She's like, Jesus, Paul, you have to go to the hospital and stuff. So Harley, and Qu- Harley mm-hmm. Quinn sends him to the, to the hospital and then, you know, all this stuff. And he goes through a massive surge of misery, um, basically – trying to like how can i write batman where like even the cops were joking when i was like here's all the details and they're like well we'll see (laughs) they just kind of they shrugged it off and they're like aren't batman would be like getting the fingerprints off a receipt and he'd be going and hunting down these guys and you know he's always out looking out for the little guy and stuff and then the reality the reality of these things is just like those muggers are never gonna get caught the police don't really care about it either because they've got other things to do and they just don't care um and so it was about, so a lot of it's about him grappling with just trying to be motivated to write a Batman story in the middle of the production of Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, people say that that's what motivates like the scene of Bruce getting beaten up by the you know the the, the muggers in when he's with Andrea and he does the Akira motorbike thing um, mm-hmm. and kicks the guy off and stuff. Uh, that scene's actually written by Alan Burnett, uh, but Paul Dini. As a kind of like compensation for us, because like the rough time is happening, they give him all the Joker scenes to write. So all this stuff is written by Paul Dini posts as he's in a massive depressive slump. Wow, that tracks. Yeah, yeah. So and so it, it's weird though, because all the abuse of Valestra too is just like this is a guy who's after getting picked on by people, yeah. and he's writing he's writing the the Joker in this scene in particular as a really vicious bully. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, man, like it's, it's it's an interesting thought process to be just looking like so. That's where he's coming from from all this. Like, the Joker is the embodiment of all these people, the, the people who did this to him, and like the, the hatred he has for them and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a really great it's a great graphic novel. I would highly recommend anyone track it down. Yeah, I have to check that out. Uh, he has the whole thing. He has conversations with the Joker, and he has conversations with Batman because they're like the voices in his head. Uh, he has conversations with the uh, death of the endless and stuff from like the Sandman comes into it and stuff as well. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So it's a re- it's a really interesting story. And um, yeah, Paul Dini just seems like he's uh, he's he's just a big sweetheart of a man. Like he's just such a you know <laughs> he's just a, a really talented but very unassuming fellow and stuff. Um, yeah, there's just some little little bit of mask of the context for you uh, there, I guess. Yeah, thank you. That was that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I'll just note as well that um, because also living uh, not in America, I've never had meatloaf. I don't even really know what meatloaf is. So uh, you you guys got so many other like weird meat things though. Like is is it spam? Is spam and meatloaf the same thing or? Because you have to. Uh, uh no, like meatloaf is basically like ground meat that you like. You like. Basically, like you, you would season it and like put it together with like an egg and like maybe some flour or something, and then like you'd bake it. Mm. And you can, it's it's either like accompanied with like gravy or um or like uh, ketchup. Ugh. I make really good meatloaf uh, myself, the, actually. <laughs> but everything you just told me about there now does not appeal to me whatsoever. <laughs> it's just like, oh. No, it's 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 very it's very um. Yeah, and I'm sorry that I insulted an entire uh, U- the UK's uh, food. Oh, but no, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm Irish. You- <laughs> like I, I insult the UK all the time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, I was just in Australia, and everybody there uh, like talks so much shit about the UK. <laughs> so I think it's uh, it's still like in my bones. But hopefully, I'm bringing the movie there soon. We'll we'll see. All over to the UK. Um, yeah, hopefully. Oh, nice, nice, talking nice. To, yeah. Talking to some folks. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to make it out to a to a screening some somewhere. It's supposed Just... to be seen in theaters. I really, I really, um, I really prefer people to see it in a theater for if they're watching it the first yeah. time. It's why. I haven't just uploaded it to Pirate Bay like all the <laughs> annoying people on Twitter say. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you come to Liverpool, uh. 
you can do the the Batman tour because the weird like they filmed it. Like, it was so weird that we were recording in Liverpool, and then they made a Batman. They movie filmed here. it there. They filmed it there. Like the oh, um, I had no idea. Wow. The uh, the building where um you see it a bunch of times. The building where like the Riddler attacks the mayor's funeral. That's St George's Hall. And like that, that like, I see that like every day. <laughs> like it's so weird to see. So I'm going like, that's just that's like five a five minute walk from here. And then the build like the GCPD is the liver building. The jumps off. It's like that's the liver building. Mm. I, I have friends who live across the way from that. Like they literally they could if they looked, had turned their heads and looked out the window, they would have seen that been filmed and stuff. Um, but yeah, so you can go and do the Batman tour of uh, of Liverpool uh, if you if you if you got a screening here. So. Um, I I just love to see the film too. Now, cause it's so strange because I want to be able to talk about it, but it's also like I've not seen a lot of it because <laughs> because you can't see it. Yet. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, yeah. No, it's and it's weird for me to talk about it too, because <laughs> yeah. it is just like yeah, it's been an interesting thing to navigate. I mean, like I and and, and to be quite honest, like it's been hard at times to not just feel uh just sort of like bad and weird about it at times because like it is like it feels like there's a lot of people that want to see this movie there's a lot of people that also want to screen this movie like it's in and there's things to navigate (laughs) to accomplish (laughs) that and like it is just it's it's a very uh it's a very grueling process it's not what i thought was going to happen with it i really thought like warner brothers was just going to ignore me like disney ignored uh escape from tomorrow mm, mm. and uh and i'm just used to in general just kind of being ignored uh but yeah like it got a lot more attention i think because of the controversy that bugs bunny created for me <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean i'm minute i'm noted out for um minute 39 is there anything in particular about minute 39 you'd want to talk to before we go vera or- no I don't think so. Thanks yeah. for thanks for having me on. Like it was really cool revisiting this. Like oh, thank you so much I for, don't com- think for coming I on. Yeah, watched a... it in its entirety in years. So yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing we usually do to ask the guests at the end is um, because BTAS is such a seminal part of like a lot of people's childhoods. Like what your other favorite cartoons were back in the day. Like if you have any uh, that you can think of, or uh, although you said you weren't even like allowed to watch The Simpsons. Uh, so I know, just... but I was allowed to. But like, I was allowed to watch Ren and Stimpy. What? Um, Come on! <laughs> like in comparison, yeah. geez, One least. of my earliest memories. One of my earliest memories is my grandpa and my grandma babysitting me, and I was watching Ren and Stimpy. I must have been like four <laughs> or five. I don't know. <laughs> I like old enough to turn on Ren and Stimpy, but definitely not old enough to be watching Ren and Stimpy. Mm. And I remember watching it, and my grandfather just muttering to himself, like. This is the most f-ed up thing I've ever <laughs> seen in my life, Kay. What the hell is this? Like, like just and that's like one of my so that was a pretty formative one. Um also just the Looney Tunes in general. I just really like I just and I I love um I I'm I I wasn't into anime as a kid, but I was really into um to Pokemon in like a but but for the like animation and like character design and like cute factor of it it was like a thing that i could like that other boys liked but like i could appreciate just because like it was like cute little monsters yeah, you know yeah and secretly like be like or, you know like in secret while you know being like oh yeah i like the fighting or whatever <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just that my the, the, we did tying into this minute actually uh like in the the house of tomorrow and stuff one of the major jokes that I that really sticks out to me from Ren and Stimpy was there's an episode where they go to like a world of tomorrow, uh, and it was called the House of Next Tuesday. Yes, yeah. uh, and I just always remember they had like yes, the House of Next Tuesday has automatic toilet seat warmers, and like Ren pushes the button, and the ceiling opens, and this big burly guy and really tight Y fronts and a really tight T-shirt just gets lowered down onto the toilet and just sits there looking at them. And he just goes like, "Be ready in few minutes," <laughs> and then he was just there to warm up the toilet seat with his ass. Um, and that was just like, "Oh, uh, that that always stuck with me." So uh, I guess yeah, it ties back into this because does the Joker have a guy who could, because the skeleton of the guy who got lowered down to uh, to warm up the the toilet of tomorrow? <laughs> um, 
but yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have any plugs, uh, Vera, like you know, um, like, uh, then... follow me at Vera Drew twenty two on Twitter and Instagram. Um, free the people's Joker. Bother James Gunn. Uh, yeah. Tell him to I think to... Of, of anyone who could get on board with it. It would be James Gunn. Like he's I a... know, you know, like, and I, I don't, I don't hold it. He, he, I, I wrote him a letter. I reached out to him through like representation and stuff. I also, um, I also just, you know, occasionally bother him on Twitter. I, I understand why he's ignoring me. He's, <laughs> he's, his plate is full. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, like, I'm sure he's kind of tired of being punk. Mm. <laughs> like he's, <laughs> he's the head of, a huge unwieldy uh like corp like the creative side of a big corporate conglomerate that doesn't know what the fuck it's doing <laughs> at any given moment and keeps shooting itself in the foot and dick so like i yeah i i i, I understand why he's ignoring uh yeah, yeah. my gay joker movie but well, sometimes you just want to go to him though like you made super James, like you used to be cool, man. <laughs> it's so funny too because like I've gotten Lloyd Kaufman uh from Trauma to to like he's he he loves what we're doing and like has even bothered James on Twitter wow, <laughs> for me. Yeah. So like I'm 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 still really yeah, I'm shocked. I mean like yeah, I don't know. I don't know what 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 go what's going on at over at Warner because like we only ever engaged with their legal team, but like it does seem like their whole creative side is just deferring to whatever. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do want like, a a Batman Begins scene though of like a Rachel Dawes in a car with James Gunn, and like <laughs> pulling him over and like slapping him in the face and been like Lloyd Kaufman would be ashamed of you. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that is. It is like I don't know. I do hope. I hope someday if I ever have any more power in this <laughs> industry, if somebody like, t you know, a few generations after me is just a weird freak that needs a little bit of help uh, getting her movie out there. I hope that I can yeah. uh, respond to it. But, yeah, and maybe but... he will. I haven't ruled it out. We never know what's going to happen. You know, like you never know what's going to happen with 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 Warner Brothers. Like, I don't. I think there's going to be probably a new team over there uh, this time next year. We'll mm. see. Yeah, yeah so I keep hearing people saying like the, the, the Daddy Zaslov, Daddy Zaslov's uh, grand plan <laughs> is to just sell Warren Brothers within four years because apparently the contracts are up in four years. I was like, that's all he's doing. He's just getting ready to sell it. He's going to sell else. it to Disney, and it, it'll it, there will be one entertain major entertainment company. Yeah, and then then you'll and, finally uh, get Batman meets Spider Man. And you're like, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Space Jam will will have Roger Rabbit in it. <laughs> But uh, cool. but yeah, yeah. Um, uh, thanks again for coming on, Vera. Uh, people know. Thank you for having me. All the Batman socials. Uh, we're on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and yeah, we'll be back uh, next week with another Bat Minute. So, uh, goodbye, Vera, uh, and goodbye, audience. Bye. Ooh. Oh, I just hit stop. Next time. Within the Harlequin of Hate's ha 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 sienda, an alarm Delta lays out his agenda. There's millions offered for a mirthful mercenary to make the Batman a marked man. But as a gambling gangster gets to grips with the situation's gravity, is it a touch too far for the demented dawn of depravity? We'll take whatever you want to finish off the next episode, folks. Same bat pod, different bat minute. <laughs> he must have dope. Dear fit, a bit of